Good morning. Welcome to Sunday morning worship at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Edison, New Jersey. So happy that you are joining us uh, this morning for worship. Happy Father's Day to all of our fathers uh, uh, today. Thank you for all that you do uh, and uh, have a blessed and uh, happy Father's Day uh, today. Take a minute to sign in to let us know that you're here. If you're new to worship at St. Paul's, welcome. Uh, please uh, sign in in the comment section uh, throughout the service at various times. Go ahead and leave the response of uh, your response in the comment section. Share God's peace uh, with your fellow worshipers. Greet one another. Uh, use those comment sections to go ahead and interact and, and be community throughout this service. If you need to download an order of service, it was inadvertently left out of this week's virtual bulletin. Uh, if you need to download an order of service, you can do so at the St. Paul's website, www.stpauls-edison.org. Uh, right there on the front page, you'll be able to download the, the order of service for today. So once again, welcome to uh, Sunday morning worship here at St. Paul's. I'm glad that you could be here. Our worship this morning begins with our order of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sin. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is Lift High the Cross, hymn number 660.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Teach us, good Lord God, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for reward, except that of knowing that we do your will, through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Jeremiah. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak out, I must cry out, I must shout, violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach in derision all day long. If I say, I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a fire burning shut up in my bones. 
I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is all around. Denounce him, let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed, and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble, and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray responsively with me a portion of Psalm 69. Surely for your sake I have suffered reproach, and shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my own kindred, an alien to my mother's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up, the scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I humbled myself with fasting, for that was turned to my reproach. I put on sackcloth also and became a byword among them. Those who sit at the gate murmur against me, and the drunkards make songs about me. But as for me, this is my prayer to you. At the time you have set, O Lord, in your great mercy, O God, answer me with your unfailing help. Save me from the mire. Do not let me sink. Let me be rescued from those who hate me and out of the deep waters. Let not the tor torrent of waters wash over me. Neither let the deep swallow me up. Do not let the pit shut its mouth upon me. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. In your great compassion, turn to me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. Draw near to me and redeem me. Because of my enemies, deliver me. Amen. A reading from Romans. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, 
A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear, for nothing that is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim from the rooftops. Do not fear those who can kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me, and whoever Oh, those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. God's message, God's message was a message of pure love and compassion for a people who had suffered for far too long. God's message went something like this. I have seen the oppression of my people. I have listened. I have heard their cries of distress. I am aware of their suffering, so I have come to rescue them from their power, to lead them out into their own fertile and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And with words like that, the Lord God commissioned Moses and sent him to the Pharaoh to gain the freedom for God's people that they had been praying for and asking for. These are words that God speaks out of mercy, steadfast love, kindness, and compassion. These are good news words that God has heard the cries of God's people and come to claim them again as his own, to save them from a life of slavery and futility, of oppression and pain, and a promise to give them a, a free life in their own land, in their own place, serving the God who loved them, who created them, and who has now come to redeem them to make them his own. But Moses, who grew up in Pharaoh's court, who knows the ways of Pharaoh intimately, knows the hardness, pride, and arrogance of Pharaoh's own heart. So when Moses hears God's word of love, mercy, compassion, and peace for his people, Moses knows that when Pharaoh hears those words, those words will be fighting words. Pharaoh will hear God's message of peace and react with violence and force because pharaohs do not respond well to anyone who wants them to render up to the Lord what they have taken to believe is theirs by their own right. How could God's message of pure love and compassion for his people, truly a message of peace, 
for the sake of God's people and actually for the sake of the whole entire world, how could such a message be so divisive and evoke such a violent response? The answer is Pharaoh's own hard, hard heart. Thousands of years later, God's voice is heard again, speaking the good news of peace, a, a message that comes out of God's love, out of God's heart of, of compassion and mercy for a people that have suffered for far too long. The message went something like this, the kingdom of heaven is come near. Turn around, change your minds, open your hearts. Believe this good news. And with words like that, our Lord Jesus went through towns and villages, taught in synagogues and in the streets, on the hillsides and on the plains. Everywhere he went, speaking words of peace, and with them, actions that put those words into action for the sake of people who were suffering. He healed the sick, he cast out demons, he forgave sins, he restored people to life. Jesus set people free, free from the shame of their sin, free from their suffering under the power of the demonic, or the power of disease, under the threat of death. He welcomed them back into this household, this family of God that he was gathering around himself. There can be no doubt that Jesus came into our world to give us peace with God and with one another. That Jesus came into this world to inaugurate the reign and rule of God over God's creation once again. And to set us free to break the powers that, that held us enslaved so that we too might be free to be God's people with the hope of a place in God's new creation. There is not violence or anger in Jesus' words. These are words that speak out of mercy, compassion, and love. Words that establish the promise of God's peaceable kingdom in our very midst. Words that reach out to include all people from the whole earth together as God's children, heirs with Christ of God's new creation. But Jesus, who grew up among us and lived and dwelled in our towns and villages, who sat with us in our places of worship and went through our places of commerce, Jesus knows the hardness, the pride and arrogance of the human heart. Jesus himself knows that when his words of love and compassion and peace that he speaks out of the love of the Heavenly Father for all people. That when he speaks these words and they meet the hardness of the human heart, they will actually evoke a violent reaction against them. Because the human heart does not respond well to anyone that calls it to render to the Lord what we believe is ours and ours alone by right. How could Jesus' message, a message of such love and such compassion, a message of such vision for a world restored at peace with God and each other, truly a message that God's favor had come and God's blessing was extended to the whole creation, how could such a message be so divisive and evoke such a violent response as to warrant the crucifixion of the Son of God. It is our hard, hard hearts. Hard hearts that resist God and what God is doing. Hard hearts that, that want to wander off their own way, that want what they want when they want it, no matter who or what must suffer as a result. Hard hearts that lash out in hate and terror when God simply demands us to give up, to let go, to set aside for the sake of others and the sake of our Lord those things that we have come to believe are simply ours by right. 
when we with our hardened hearts resist the gospel of peace, we suddenly discover that the same gospel has become a sword of the Spirit, and that sword God has pointed to our own hearts. Because that too is why Jesus was sent into the world, to free us from the slavery of our hardness of our own heart, to free us from the oppression of our own hatred and our own selfishness, so that God could recreate us to be a people like Jesus, a people who have God's heart for the world. To the Pharaoh who dwells in us, to the Pharisee who lurks inside, to the Pontius Pilate in us, this word of peace means the end of our lives as we know it. And yet, to the Hebrew in us, to the tax collector in us, to the poor, sick, lame, blind, diseased person in us, this word comes to us as good news, the good news of a promised life renewed, set free from those powers that hold us. It is a gospel of peace. St. Paul clues us in on what God has truly done for us in our baptism. The old creature has died to sin, and a new creature, a new creation, has been raised to walk in new life with Jesus Christ. So we no longer continue in sin or in the ways of death, nor do we occupy or spend our time and energy championing the causes of sin and death in this world. We do not promote the ways of the Pharaoh, the ways of the Pharisee, or the ways of the Pontius Pilots of this world, but now we have pledged allegiance to Christ who came to save us, and we are sent to proclaim Jesus' own gospel of peace. Over these last few weeks that we've read the gospel, especially these readings that we've heard we, over these past two weeks, we, we read them all together with the assumption that we are all Jesus' disciples. Jesus gives us instructions and words of wisdom to his followers as he sends us out into the world to announce and share his gospel of peace. And along the way, because Jesus knows what's in the human heart, Jesus instructs us to hold on tight to that gospel, to not lose faith in him or the power of his word but to persevere in endurance in his message of peace and love, and along the way endure the hatred, the intimidation and rejection of those who are all too hard-hearted, even when they rise up against us from within our own hearts. We read and hear and we act on these words as people who have died to sin in our baptism and have been raised now to walk in this new life, this new vision of God's kingdom in Jesus Christ. That we are the ones who can receive God's forgiveness. We live a life that is characterized by the daily confession of our sin so we can receive new God's forgiveness of a daily dying to self so that we might live for Christ alone, of daily turning our back on this world and what it values, power, privilege, and position so that we might take up Jesus' own cross and follow him into the promise of a truly just and peaceable kingdom. Is that the case with us? Are we truly Jesus' disciples? Are we truly a people who have left everything behind, who have let everything else go so that we could follow Jesus? Are we truly a people who have received this gospel so that we can share it, who have learned the ways of Christ and applied ourselves to the knowledge of his ways so that we can teach others the ways of Jesus in the things we do and in the things we say?
we have people who have died to sin, who live for Christ, knowing that God's kingdom is the only sure and certain promise of what tomorrow brings. Where do our allegiances fall? Whose interests do we serve in what we say, in what we do? When we see what is going on in the world around us today, when we hear the cries of people who have suffered far, far too long, when we hear the proclamation of the gospel of peace that looks to set people free, give them space to breathe in the opportunity to live as God's beloved children in this world, when we hear of simple steps that we can take to stop the spread of disease and spare hundreds or thousands of people suffering and affliction, we hear our Lord sending us out into this world in his name, sending us out into this world with its evil, armed only with words and deeds that flow from the compassionate, loving heart of our Lord Jesus. Our Lord sends us out in peace, like lambs in the midst of wolves, to speak good news that flow from God's pure love and compassion that look to bring peace and reconciliation to the world. It is a world of healing, a word of healing that we have received, and a word of healing that we have to give. But we know the human heart as well. And we must learn to recognize that the violent reaction of some does not reveal the weakness of the word but it reveals nothing more than the secret, hard, hard heart they are keeping hidden and lying to cover. That to this day, those hard, hard hearts still fight against God, God's promise, and God's ways. We must learn to recognize it, because we have done the same. And when we find ourselves and catch ourselves whispering or shouting or in any way giving voice to the hard-hearted message of the pharaohs, the Pharisees, and the Pontius Pilots of this world and this age, then understand that this is not the way it should be. And it is not the way of the world that will always be, but it is only our hard-hearted resistance to God's plan and purpose. It is only sin lurking within us. And when that happens, there is nothing we can do but simply stop, close our mouths, turn around, repent and believe the good news of Jesus Christ. That also comes to us as a sword that cuts away the old human heart and replaces it with the loving heart of Christ. Sometimes the healing we need most requires the cutting edge of the scalpel. And sometimes we need to share the good news of Jesus Christ by showing the world our scars. In Jesus' name. Our hymn of the week, our hymn of the day, our hymn of the month, actually, is Listen, God is Calling. Uh, please uh, join us in singing, Listen, God is Calling.
together with all God's baptized people, let us confess our faith using the words of our baptismal creed, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole world, let us pray for our shared world. Expansive, God, you bring diverse voices together to form your church. Open our hearts and unstop our ears to learn from one another, that differences might not overshadow our baptismal unity. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Providing God, your creation shows us that life comes from death. Renew the places where our land, air, and waterways have been ill for too long. Direct the work of all who care for birds and their habitats. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Protecting God, sustain and keep safe all who work to defend across others across the world. Revive and strengthen people to dedicated to caring for refugees and migrant, migrants while their homelands struggle for peace. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Loving God, you promise to be with all who are persecuted for your sake. Guide all who speak your word of justice and console any who are tormented or targeted for being who they are. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Compassionate God, you are with us and we are never alone. Bless all fathers and father figures who strive to love and nurture as you do. Comfort all who long to be fathers and all for whom this day is also difficult. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of compassion, your son brought healing to all the towns and villages where he went in, and he has brought his healing to the world. We pray this morning for those who are in need of healing for your peace, especially those who are on our prayer list, whose names we bring before you now. For Georgine and Paul, Elaine, Denise, Charlie, Jack, George, Dave, Jim, Barbara, Joe, Bob, Donna, Ed, and Adam. For Bill, <coughs> Dennis, Janice, Andrew, Brett, Travis, Chris, TJ, Rob, Diane, Sharon, Paula, Michelle, Penny, Gail, Shirley, Matthew, Kathy, Vanessa, Paula, Robert, Linda, Karen, Lorena, Ray, Frank, Tracy, Adam, Allison, Marie, Sherry, Ed, Dave, Alessio, Michelle, Richard, Megan, Elsie, Kathy, Gabby, Ben, Kathy, Evelyn, Tierney, Gisla, Ed, Matthew, Sue, Leslie, Jay, Stephanie, Ed, Bob, Sirena, Frankie, Judy, Dolores, Andy, Joseph, Damian, Marianne, Joseph, David, Dorothy, Dorothy, John Patrick, Tyler, Rosalind, John, Penny, Tom, Peg, Stephen, Corinne, Karen, Maisie, Karen, Dennis, Barbara, Justin, Stan, Sean, Lila, Skipper, Ronald, Kathy, Tess, Ethel, Les, Rick, Samantha, Anne, Fran and Francis, Gail, Sue, Chuck, Amy, Noah, Nicholas, Ricky, Chris, Aaron. For the grieving Ursig family, for all who are at home, 
awaiting test results for all who are still suffering and struggling in hospitals, for medical workers and first responders around the world, for all who will go back to work tomorrow, and for those who are unemployed. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Reigning God, you bless us with guides and caretakers in the faith. As we give thanks for those who have died, increase our care for one another until we walk with them in newness of life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, in those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Share a sign of God's peace with each other. Uh, leave a message of peace for one another in the comment section below and throughout the day. Again, offer that peace uh, and invitation uh, to worship, an invitation to reconciliation with friends and loved ones. Our worship continues with the sharing of our gifts and our offerings. We thank God for all that God has done for us in Jesus Christ, and, and we offer up our gifts and offerings as a response and, and gratitude, a sign of grateful hearts for what God has done and has created us to be in Christ. We offer them also up for the sake of the mission of this congregation, to share the good news of Jesus Christ in word and in deed. So I invite you now to share your gift uh, as part of your worship this morning. You can make an electronic gift by going to the St. Paul's website, www.stpauls-edison.org. Click on the link that says online giving or give a gift now at the top of the home page and make your electronic gift, give your electronic offering. When you make that gift, consider please uh, clicking the mark that would make uh, the box that would make this a recurring gift so your ongoing generosity can continue uh, to give and to support uh, the mission and ministry of Christ through this, uh, uh, through this congregation. Thank you again for your generosity. Thank you again for your partnership in Jesus' mission. Our worship continues now with our canticle of thanksgiving. <laughs> Let us pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need. Awaken us to the needs of others. And at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Some announcements uh, before we leave today, just to let you know on some things that are coming up this next week and, and over the next few weeks here at St. Paul's. 
First of all, I want to encourage all of you to read and to open the emails that you're receiving. They include important information about how we're moving back to in-person gatherings, how we'll continue, uh, how we'll start to receive Holy Communion, how we'll continue to gather as an online community, how we can strengthen your house and home as a place uh, of worship, study, and prayer. So I encourage you to, to read those, uh, to respond to those uh, emails that are sent out. Uh, to you. If you have not received our emails or if you need to be uh, sign up for that, you can go to the St. Paul's homepage, uh, fill out the form at the bottom to be sure that you receive those, those email updates uh, each week. If you don't receive email yourself, uh, ask a friend, uh, a, a child, a grandchild, somebody that can keep you up to date on that. Ask them to sign up and subscribe and then share that news with you in whatever way uh, you can. Again, as we're making some transitions and changes through the summer, uh, opening, reading, being up to date on those emails becomes uh, that much more important. Uh, things coming up this week, Church Council will meet tomorrow night at 7 o'clock on Zoom. We offer two Bible studies each week, a chance for us to, to hear Jesus' word, to respond and to share that with other people that are around, to dig a little deeper into those gospel lessons each week. We have a Bible study at 1 p.m. on Wednesdays and at 7 p.m. on Thursdays. These meet on Zoom. You can find links to sign up for those uh, in the email uh, newsletters that are sent out to you each week. Every night at 9 p.m., we gather to end our day in prayer, also on Zoom. You can find the link for our bedtime prayers uh, also in the emails you receive each week. Now, a word about in-person gatherings. Uh, our regathering team and church council have, have put together plans for our first in-person gathering to take place this coming Saturday, June 27th at 5.30 p.m. It will be a spoken service of evening prayer with prayers for healing, uh, and we're going to hold that on the back lawn here at St. Paul's. Uh, we are asking that if you wish to attend this in-person gathering, that you would sign up for it. You can sign up by calling the St. Paul's office, 732-287-0888, or by clicking the sign up link that, that appeared in the two emails that you were sent this week, the virtual bulletin and the announcement about in-person gatherings. Um, when you attend these uh, in-person gatherings, uh, we're asking for three simple rules, that you always wear a face covering, that you give your neighbor at least six feet of their own personal space, that you maintain that social distancing, and that you treat your fellow worshipers with love and respect by actively looking out for their own safety and well-being. Also, I would like to let you know that our online services uh, and our worship in home continue, and we see those to be the primary way that the whole community can gather together. So each morning at 10, each Sunday morning at 10 a.m., we'll continue uh, to gather on Facebook Live. We'll continue to make those streams available on YouTube and on our, our uh, website so that as a whole community, we can be here. So if you uh, do not feel safe coming out at this time, if you are not ready for in-person gatherings, if you are in a particularly high-risk category, we would encourage you to continue worshiping from your home and seeing that we are a community that's gathered in homes through these online tools. Uh, also, our work of our food pantry uh, continues. We thank uh, all of the volunteers at our food pantry for the hard work they do each week in keeping the food pantry stocked and giving out the food on Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, you can donate non-perishable food to our food pantry anytime by placing it in the box located outside of the double glass doors that are the entrance to the lounge. Uh, just drive around to the back of the building uh, and leave your food in that box there. Uh, again, thank you for those non-perishable foods. If you would like to volunteer in the food pantry, please call Jane Brady. We are particularly looking for people who can uh, run food to, uh, to our clients in the parking lot that can make that, that effort, especially uh, in this uh, as the weather gets a little warmer. Uh, and we're also looking for some people who can help shop each week to, keep, to, to purchase food to keep our food pantry stocked. Uh, for any of those volunteer uh, efforts, uh, please uh, give Jane Brady a call.
Thank you again for worshiping with us. If you're new, welcome uh, to the St. Paul's community and to all that we do. Again, please leave your messages in the comments section, and we hope to talk to you soon. St. Paul writes, reminds us, comforts us through the Holy Spirit that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in God's eternal love. Amen. Please join me in singing our closing hymn, I Love to Tell the Story, hymn 661. Share the good news. Tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love in the things that you say, in the things that you do this week. Amen. Thanks be to God.